Hello YouTube, Reddit Math here, and welcome back to the Red Estate. We are alive with the Inhuman Bondage patch. Uh, playing today uh, in the evening after the patch came out. Uh, you'll probably be watching this about 24 hours after uh, the release of the latest update. I wasn't able to take off work as I've been able to do in uh, some of the previous patch releases, and so I'm playing it a little bit later in the day than I normally would be, but uh, I wanted to get to it the day that the changes were made. And although I haven't been able to play yet, uh, that does mean, unlike previous releases, I've been able to check out a little bit of the uh, chitter chatter on the r slash darkest dungeons subreddit. And people are pissed. The difficulty has been ramped up yet again, and uh, we have a lot of very soured spirits uh, from what I have seen so far. Uh, some of the big highlights, of course, we have the new hero class, the Abomination. Uh, we've got some new mini-boss kind of roaming monsters in the Collector and the Madman. They have... There's an entire entry on the patch notes, which I'll link in the description if you want to follow along with me. Uh, there's a section of the patch notes labeled stress with five S's. And in general, stress has been retooled uh, to be far more common. And that's gonna be kind of interesting, uh, specifically in the veteran and dungeon level uh, missions. And so, yeah, good times. Uh, they've also revised the heart attack mechanics. Uh, they now put you on death's door instead of killing you outright, which is an interesting change. And speaking of Death's Door, it now causes a debuff that will last the rest of the dungeon, which that is one that really scares me, honestly, because in the past, Death's Door was just like going to happen all the time, and I just accepted it, it occasionally came, and then it went, and we were fine, we bounced right back. That is no longer going to be the uh, the case. Also, the stalling penalty has been massively reworked to be something that just seems to happen if you don't kill a single enemy unit left behind. Um, like, if you take more than a turn to dispatch the last guy. And it's no longer just, oh, here's some stress for you. The enemy now gets reinforcements if you stall. Yeah, that's going to be super exciting. Uh, there were some balance passes done to the Leper, the Plague Doctor, and buffed debuff resistances on several classes. Uh, also, apparently the Man-at-Arms uh, repost lasting multiple rounds was a bug from the last patch. It was not intended to last three rounds. It should have been lasting one, but they've compromised, and it now lasts two, and they're going to check out how that goes. There is then a huge list of just minor tweaks. Uh, initiative has been changed from a D10 roll to a D8, so it's going to be swinging a lot less back and forth. Uh, there have been AI improvements. Uh, a lot of usability things, which some of which I've already seen just loading in. There's now, um, since they're already in the sanitarium removing it, it's kind of hard to see. There's this little like germ icon right here on Facamp. Uh, that highlights him as having a disease, and so it's a little bit easier to sort of scan over your roster and see like, oh, he's diseased, oh, he's diseased, oh, she's diseased, so that you can ensure they're getting into the sanitarium like they should be. Um, any, uh, there's some new trinkets that have been introduced. Uh, one I love, the map starts zoomed out whenever you load into the dungeon. Felt like every time I loaded in, I always had to zoom out to see the whole thing. Uh, that's just a, a neat little usability type thing. Uh, some bug fixes, little minor tweaks. I don't think I've missed anything huge. Uh, the camping quote unquote exploit has been patched. You can no longer camp and then immediately leave the dungeon, uh, which is a change that they had, had mentioned uh, previously. And is something that I would do to de-stress at the end of long dungeons quite often. Uh, they have also... Uh, made another usability change that I know I had pointed out in the past that uh, the little quest complete um, crest up here, whenever you would click it, it would cause you to backtrack one step, oftentimes taking stress because of it. 
that is no longer the case. Uh, it now exits the dungeon appropriately, so that's pretty cool. With all of the changes that have occurred, I've thought about this, and what I, I think would be the most prudent course of action is I should take out my lowest level guys because uh, when the Cove came out, the very first time I went into that, I believe I lost a level six Hellion just right out the gate. Uh, it was very, very painful, and I don't want to see that happen again. So I'd rather be risking some people uh, that have not been with us for a terribly long time and with that in mind, I might also, yeah, uh, what can he, he can do all of this from the second rank. Sweet. I can also check out, you would no longer need to be able to heal people. So let's get that cleansing crystal off of you. We're going to check out a second rank occultist, which is a thing I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, the Demon's Cauldron is absolutely what we want due to it having the stun skill chance. Debuff, move. Um, do we keep the damage? Do we keep the move skill? Yeah, I'll keep the damage on. Uh, that seems that seems prudent. Uh, we could grab for dodge. Oh yeah, I wanted, I wanted to get the coat before I tried all this out uh, for the dodge chance, but of course that did not end so well. We will never speak of it again. Now, uh, I do, however, only have three characters that can uh, head out, so I'm going to pop into the stagecoach. Now, I've already been in here, you know, hoping and a praying, wishing, and a, okay, wrong song. Anyway, um, that there would be an abomination here, but I'm pretty sure it rolled these characters when I exited the last dungeon, and this hasn't been refreshed yet at all, so there was no chance of that. What I would need is a frontline character... And there are some pretty decent choices here, right? Like two Hellions, a Crusader, two Man-at-Arms. We could do it. Except I'm going to be super silly. And if I sort by class, I've got two of all those things. What I don't have right now is a second Grave Robber. And so I'm going to go ahead and pick up Osmont. To those with a keen eye, gold gleams like a dagger's point. And we are going to immediately unlock for her pick to the face. And what else does she need? Throne dagger, poison darts. Okay, she's got poison darts. We'll grab her throne dagger as well. And then she's going to get the opposite configuration and get a, let's do it like this, a pick to the face, shadow fade, Throne Dagger, and Poison Dart. So that is everything Oman does not have. And then they're going to share what I consider to be the Grave Robber signature move, even though uh, I believe Flashing Dagger is the one they all start with. Uh, but I'm going to take Shadow Fade. I think that's by far her most useful, and her ability to move back and stun is super awesome. And she is going to be our frontline character, which is a terrifying thing to say. Now, we have been rambling on for long enough. Let's go ahead and pop into which dungeon we want to take on. Now, I don't have a lot of options. Uh, a long exterminate sounds like a terrible idea. So given some limited choices, we're going to go ahead and just do a short cove mission with them. And I'm going to end up in something like this, which is... This is an example of exactly the order not to be using these character classes in. We're going to see if we can make it work. Another big change uh, that I didn't really go over is the provisioning limits. Okay, and it's represented here. So now you'll see I can only take six bandages total. Wow. Okay. I had, the, the notes reflect that this is a thing that's going to happen, but didn't really explain how much it was happening. I can only have 18 food. I I have no words to express. Why do why can I have 18 torches? I don't need 18 torches. I want more food. Oh man. Okay, it's fine. We're fine. Everything's fine. 
it's just a short dungeon. Uh, it is in the cove though, so bandages are like super at a premium. Also the medicinal herb curios are too good to pass up. And I guess we'll go one stack, right? Yeah, the stacks haven't changed. Wow, the, the hard numbers on this stuff, uh, interesting. I've never considered taking more than six antivenom or six bandages or six keys or six holy water. Those things can seem rather silly. 18 torches even seems like plenty. The only thing is I would be bringing more food all the time. Like running out of food is now going to be a serious concern. Uh, oh, I almost made a terrible mistake. I didn't do it though. I almost forgot trinkets. Okay, uh, please don't click on equip all. That would be very inconvenient for me. Um, the stunning satchel is too good. Light skill, light skill, dodge accuracy. So with blight skill, uh, she does have darts, although she's almost never going to get to use them. Maybe the dodge improvement is better. Maybe there's just a generic that's better. Um, let's sort by rarity. Let's check out some rare stuff here. See if you've got any good trinkets like just a I'm thinking like a good defensive thing uh, is what I want to see. Uh, max HP wouldn't be awful. Speed plus dodge, stun and move. Yeah, let's take a feather crystal. That seems like a really good fit for a grave robber. All right, and everybody else is trinketed. Okay, so glad that that did not go very poorly. All right, let's go ahead and grab our 18 food because that's all we're allowed to have. And something like this and get this show on the road. Uh, the load screens have been updated. There's now a fancy little flame. Uh, the, there's a similar load screen when going back into the Hamlet that looks really cool too. Um, we will get to see that towards the end of this video, but uh, totally looking forward to it. And okay, and a brief. The smell of rotting fish is almost unbearable. And yeah, that, you know, that is great. From just like a simple UI usability thing, uh, if you didn't catch it, you know, it started just zoom to like right here and it took just a second and then it did the zoom in and recenter. I love that. That's that's exactly what I would have always wanted it to be doing. Um, glad to see little, little things like that. Now, um, now that we're underway, uh, obviously, I haven't seen any of this in action yet, but I do want to give some of my thoughts on the patch notes. Uh, people have mentioned this before. I had a comment once uh, that I really loved that was just... They appreciated uh, that I, I try not to get bogged down in the negativity or like, oh my god, they changed it, now it sucks. You know, that kind of mentality for the game. Ultimately, I'm not a game designer. Uh, I haven't had the ability to... Of course, we're surprised to uh, make any and every change to all of this and see like how it interacts with everything, which, you know, Red Hook has been able to do, right? Like, it, it's not like they just tried the numbers and said, yeah, we'll see if that works. Um, they've been able to do their own internal testing. So with that in mind, like, I trust that they have some semblance of what is going on here. Uh, four for three? Yeah, let's do that. That should guarantee the kill if it bleeds. Perfect. So, you know, I do trust that uh, maybe, just maybe, they have some idea of what they intended to do out of this. So we'll eliminate him. Let's go ahead and get this guy out of the way too. Oh man, that hits so hard. the offensive. So we're going to take one attack from the brigand. Let's see if this... Uh, so we've got one guy left at the end of the first turn. Now I want to understand... Okay, so nothing happened to us. But what I, I think is going to happen is... He's now blighted. If we don't kill him this turn... He would 
be able to call for reinforcements. That is my understanding. So we will just not play with that. Destroy them all. Okay. So uh, again, to maybe complete a thought eventually, um, I generally try to approach this stuff with I'm going to roll with the punches. I'm going to see what did the changes do. I'm going to try to adapt my own play style to suit some of this. You know, there were some people uh, leaving comments today about you know this tactic isn't going to work anymore, or like oh man, you're going to be super screwed whenever this happens. No, like I mean, I'm only doing some of those things because they work in the current game. And as soon as they don't work in the current game, like I'm, I'm not gonna do those things anymore, right? Like it it makes sense. I um, uh, wish you could hit that. Let's uh, let's get him bleeding. Yeah, it's not very much bleed, no. Um, we could kill her, start him bleeding. Let's kill her. Stress is now our new enemy, right? Like we're, we're super concerned about stress. And then I can stun him, or I can miss. Death by inches. Now let's watch us take like six turns of enemy attacks all in a row. Yeah, that was the thing that happened. Hey. There's a debuff attached to that? That's new, right? Okay, same old, same old. Yep, yeah, here comes the second a round. A blow to Ooh. body and brain. Uh, that was a, uh, certainly a decent amount of stress-inducing. Uh, you know what? Let's try for the stun here. Good. That takes the protection off of this guy. But do we try to kill him? Oh, man. Wow. Crazy. A plus 10 stress damage for two turns. I like... That, that's a cool way to introduce more stress instead of just a straight, like, you take more stress now. It's, uh, man, 58% protection is no joke. Um, I, I like that. That's a cool way to do it. Instead of just, you constantly take more stress damage, uh, it's a little bit more, you... Yeah, that'll just kill. Advantage. Give them no quarter. Uh, you just take more stress from uh, from anything else. I, I think that's pretty neat. Um, we can stun both of these guys. Perfect. All right, and he's still Mister Protection here. Let's see if I can get one more rank back. Awesome. I do land the other stun, and then I'm gonna try to stack some incisions, their bleeds, and then her. Um, you know, I'm not worried about that. This is also, uh, you know, medicinal herbs. Like, I've never used it to eliminate combat debuffs in the longest time. Um, except for combat debuffs that were, like, self-inflicted uh, for the Hellion and the Leper. But that's actually something that, that it might see some worth for now, is to get rid of those uh, sort of stress-inducing attacks. That's an interesting idea. I like it. I like it. Um, he is in a poor position just because they haven't acted yet. Like, I would have gladly thrown a flashbang at this guy again, but uh, he hadn't had his turn yet, so a little unfortunate. Um, we could kill him or we stack more bleed. Ooh, that actually cut pretty deep. And then... Precision and power. Lovely. We are getting those good stress heals off of any of the critical strikes that our party is doing. Uh, I'm digging that. Now, we don't really have anybody that heals or anything. There is no reason for us to stall. So we are just going Confidence to as the enemy kill him and then kill as him. The fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. We'll grab our little trinket and get that right out of there. Uh, now this is a buff and heal. Um, let's go ahead and have Moyo try this out. She doesn't have much stress, but she's got a lot of HP damage uh, that I might want healed. Um, and I think it's just stress. Okay, it doesn't take off 
I think it might be a 50-50. I take very poor notes, okay? I went through and I wrote down what everything did, but I wrote it down as a buff slash, oh, it's a buff slash stress heal. So it's either, you either get stress reduction or some sort of buff from it. Got it. I should have not used the character I did. That's fair. Uh, let's get these guys back into the appropriate turn order. Uh, we're going to use a little bit of our, our food. I feel like what they did is they said, stop using food to heal and uh, only use food for hunger. And there is your food restriction. Which is weird because I felt like so many people were complaining about how you you absolutely have to bring a Vestal with you into every single dungeon. And uh, food was sort of a way that you could mitigate that quite a bit. Um, and that's no longer that's no longer valid. Uh, it's kind of crazy. I wonder what their idea there is. Do you just you bring a Vestal all the time? Is that the new meta? Is that we always need Vestals? Uh, there was a little bit of talk from some of the, the developers uh, about whether or not introducing a new like it was the I think last week's kind of community discussion that was started by their community manager was um, regarding healing and, and how it works in the game and, and whether or not uh, players were happy with it. You know, do you do you need to put in another healing class or is it possible to get by without it right now? All of that kind of stuff. Uh, we're kind of putting that to the test right now. Oh wow, that is a very poor roll. We're gonna focus this guy though, and if we get the bleed, he is out of this. Awesome. Um, let's then, nobody's Eldritch, so that's six to nine. It's not bad, but we're gonna go ahead. Love that move. Never get to use Hands from the Abyss. Like, it was not a thing that ever came up before. So like we get him up here so he has to rush shot that cuts on its own he's stunned we really just need to worry about the one blanket fire that's gonna come in and it wasn't bad uh, a two and all ones there's a debuff attached to blanket fire okay because I feel like that's you know everyone was basically saying blanket fire is not strong enough you should definitely buff it I think that that's some <laughs> That's some terrifying change right there. Uh, I assume it's gonna be another one of those stress-inducing type debuffs, which aren't horrible, right? Like, oh, such good dodges though. Um, but that is a little bit, a little bit silly. Let's be realistic. This is such a strong bleed. 12 damage over three turns. Um, let's just get some good old fashioned hits in here uh, like one of those and he's gonna bleed himself Slowly, right out gently this is how a life is taken all right we'll get a um, move on might as well swap these guys back out I would love to be able to use a little bit of food to heal up here I you know what I think would be a really cool change uh, is if uh, we can probably make do with just a single shovel was it worth it? Maybe. Um, we need five food if we run into another hunger event. Ugh, so we got like two. Uh, we'll hold on to it in case we need to pull somebody off of death's door after the end of a fight, I guess. Uh, one thing I would actually be interested to see is a provision item that was focused around healing. Uh, if we're going to do... How do you survive? Oh, so good. Or like bandages could be used outside of combat for some sort of like 10 HP restore or something like that. Um, or probably a percentage would be a good way to go, like 25% of max HP. Um, I don't have the number obviously perfect off the top of my head, but you get the idea. Uh, something like that. I think, oh my god, I didn't kill him. Uh, I really, I hate that I had to, see? I hate that I had to use three attacks against that guy. Oh, that's so bad. Uh, we will, however, stun you. 
because you are stupid. Um, could also send this guy, but I'd rather just get the damage on him. And as long as we can act one more time, we can do something like that. Yeah. Uh, again, the flashbang becomes worthless. It did shuffle him, if that means anything. Uh, but I think, you know, would, what do you guys think? Uh, I would take that as a, a cool compromise. Um, some people might argue that it's, it compromises the vision of the game, that you, you currently don't have those kinds of healing potions out of combat. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. And that, you know, in combat healing is intrinsically dangerous. There's, there's a risk to trying to stay in combat to heal up. Uh, like towards the end of a fight, but I feel like with the new stalling and reinforcement mechanics, like there's just there's no healing at the end of combat. I don't think there's a way to game that anymore. Um, you're not gonna want to stand around just getting reinforcements called on you constantly. Um, uh, uh, I guess we got the incision. Just maybe do a little bit of bleed on him. Why not, right? Um, stun him here. Oh, he resisted the stun even with super trinketed stunny times. That's not good. I'm gonna do 11. I can do the damage debuff. I don't. What do I. Oh, I don't know. I'm gonna go with the stun. I think that makes the most sense. Yeah, we did land at that time. So, you know, does it compromise the uh, the vision of the game to create something like that? Or does it... My, my counter-argument there would be that uh, it opens up additional play styles. You know, that freeing yourself of having to bring a healer with you is good for the overall health of the game. I would be very interested to hear any of your thoughts on uh, on what you think of that. Like, what would the game need to uh, to free you from the requirements of the Vestal? You know, what do you need to see uh, to not feel like every single dungeon requires that the one class? Unforeseen. Unforgiving. Oh, to even be survivable. Oh, okay. We're about to see some uh, new mechanics at work. Uh, those mechanics being what happens when you hit Monsters death's door. Size has no intrinsic merit, unless inordinate oh, that's a big dodge. A virtue. That's a real big dodge. Uh, I can't even hit him. I'm, so I'm just going to Battlefield Medicine. I'd rather get the one HP back. Um, go for the sun here. Yeah. He resists the move, but he gets stunned, and that matters more than anything. Can we burn him down in a single turn? We're a little bit out of position uh, with him being in the third rank, but Hook and Slice will get the job done fairly well on its own. We need to do one damage to this little guy. Oh, how lovely. And we can clear all corpses, because that's a thing that we do. Totally. Um, and we'll just sacrifice him. Sweet. As victories mount, so too will resistance. All right. Uh, we are very, very low on health. What can we take? What can't we take? Uh, ooh, a little bit of food. I can go down to five. Get him just a little bit of healing. And, uh... It doesn't even matter anyway, right? Like, we've scouted, we know. Uh, I am going to continue adventuring, though. We have the opportunity to pull just a little bit of stress off of Osmont by having her easily take care of that trap. And that's a free eight stress, you know? Oh, and that beautiful no backtrack when clicking the quest. We will find all manner of great and terrible things in this watery tomb. All right. I think that went pretty well. Uh, we made about 9,915 gold 
off of it. I think we over-provisioned a little bit, uh, of course, bringing with us everything except food in too great a quantity. And we are going to get some diseases here. Yeah, spoils the uh, surprise a little bit when he already has the emblem on him. Dark Temptation, that's no good. Nothing at all. It's really disappointing. Uh, slow draw, not a fan of that. Oh, more stress damage. Eldritch Slayer on a backline bounty hunter is not really great. And Tapeworm is going to need to get removed. He already has 100% uh, food due In to the trinket. Time, you will know the tragic extent of my failings. Is that? No, wait just a second. It's only... I'm what? I'm super confused. All right, I'm going to point out something in just a moment. But first, let's go through everything that happened here. Uh, we got three level ups. Great. We pulled off three negative quirks. Awesome. We pulled off three diseases. Super cool. We relieve some stress. Kind of weird. Uh, so Revere's debauchery has reached new heights. Whereabouts unknown. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, guys. Um, Pleasure of the Flesh recovered 100 stress. Fantastic. Except she has also gone missing. What confused me so very much is her name is different here than it is here. There's an extra letter in her name, and it's a like it's a fancy e. And I was thinking to myself, wait, you can make fancy e's? I've never seen a fancy e in the game. But like, apparently it's in there. It's it is. Oh wow. Okay, so I can left to right, you know, through the uh, the letters. There's actually an unrendered character right here. Um, that. That's that's a bug. Clearly, that's a bug. Um, but it does render when you're uh, viewing the activity log, um, and so that's strange. What secrets are all of our party members hiding from us in their fancy letters that I can't see in the roster? That's an interesting question. And last but not least, ah. Uh, I was really hoping for the Abomination, guys. I was super hoping for the Abomination. You know what that means? Uh, I can't stop playing now. I'm going to have to do another run right away. So uh, you are going to be seeing a, another episode of Darkest Dungeon in just a little while. We'll do two for today just so I can get a little bit further into the new update, experience a little bit more, and hopefully fill out that 25th roster slot with a new character class. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, feel free to subscribe for more on the channel every single day. Leave a like or a comment if you have anything to say about this or any of my other videos, and I will catch you guys next time.